Hello everyone, welcome back to our Grasshopper course. Today, I will present you the second lecture for Grasshopper's data processing and management. I want to mention something before we start it today. Inside Grasshopper, they refer to the nested list that we mentioned earlier as a tree. Figuratively, they call those sublists within those lists as branches, which again, just showcase the developers of this software are trying so hard to present the idea of nested list to the designers, which I think is just causing more confusion. But I still want you to know how they call them, just in case that you don't understand what other people are talking about in the future inside of the Grasshopper online discussion forum or places like that. So in this course, I'm still going to use the terminologies that people would use inside of the computer science world so that you can talk like a pro. Also, I'm planning to open my Python course for the designers in the near future. And if you are going to take that course, you can easily pick it up after this semester. So today we're going to talk about the list operations within Grasshopper. First, let's see the definition of list operations. List operations are operations that can be performed on the data in the list data structure. Long story short, list operations are the commands that we can use to process, retrieve, cut, or organize the data within the list. Of course, there are tons of other things we can do other than just process, organize, cut, etc. And let's begin our journey today. Inside of Grasshopper, if you want to find those operations or components that you can use for list operations, it's all under this tab, sets. And inside of those tabs, there are all kinds of different operations you can use to process those data within the list, or you can use it to process the list itself. Okay, let's start with the first tab on the left. And today we're going to cover all those list operations which are the most important ones that we will discuss in the real projects. Let's start from the first one, which is called list item. Okay, we, we have it here, list item. Okay, let's begin by looking at our list that we're gonna focus on today. So this list has five items inside, A, B, C, D, E, okay? They have their own index, zero, one, two, three, four. And what does this thing call List item does is that it will retrieve or you will get the specific data based on the index that you are giving it to. Okay, let's read the description. Retrieve a specific item from a list. So, for example, the default index is zero here. So they will take zero, which is A. And if we do two, we will get C. And if we do five, which is out of index, so they will wrap it up to the top, which will be A. And that's what the wrap is doing here. If we change the wrap into false, they will say none because this index is out of this list. Index five doesn't exist in this list, but if you choose wrap it, they will go to the top and keep going. If you do six, they will find the index one, which is B, so on and so forth. And some of us will ask, what if this list has multiple lists? inside of this list, okay, well, we will see. Okay, let's find the example. So this is a list that we were talking about yesterday. This list has four lists inside of it, and each list has two items. And if we come over here and choose list item, and by default, you will find the first item, which is index zero, and let's see what the result will be. Well, they will pick up the first item, within all those lists, right? And they will find, hello world, Luna is lovely, this number and this floating point numbers. And if you change it to index one, you are expecting to see the second item on this list. Okay, so this is what the list item does. It doesn't care how many lists you have inside of this big list. They will just retrieve the specific data from those sub lists based on the index of your input. So perfect. Let's look at the second command or list operation, which is graph tree. We explained it a little bit earlier and we just want to recite knowledge since it's so important. Once you graph some tree, you will change the tree from one list have multiple data to each data item has its own tree. So if you use graph to this 
list of data, you will upgrade every items inside of the list into its own individual list. Again, before we only have one list, its path or its index is zero. And now we have zero, zero. That means that we have two layers of structure. Before there is just one layer of data and now it's two layers. And then each list has five different lists and each of those five lists has one item, right? And the reverse operation is called flatten tree. I will show you here. Right here, if we use flatten tree into this data structure, and we will see what's going to happen. Okay, so they basically toss out all the data structure that they inherited from the previous list. And then it goes back to the original form, which is one list and have multiple items. Okay, so these nested lists have been flattened into one list. So that's called flattened tree and this is called graph tree. Another thing I want to mention to you is that you can graph a tree multiple times. For example, okay, so once you graph this list, as we mentioned before, this list will become a list that has five lists inside and each of those five lists has one item, right? This is what graph tree does. Next thing is if we graph this nested list again, right? Each item will become a own list again. What's going to happen? From the data perspective, seems like nothing happened, but the path, okay? Basically the index of this lists will be upgraded too. They will put another zero here. That means this is a list within a list within a list. So this is a very complicated concept right now. And we will explain it in the future for our specific projects. But I want you to know that they have their specific organizing system for their index for those lists too. So that's something I want you to keep in mind. The next thing I want to present to you is the item index. This is a super, super complicated concept, but it's very commonly used in some complicated projects. Let's floating our cursor here. It says retrieve the index of a certain item in a list. And we have A, B, C, D, E here. So here's a list to search. And then this is the item to search for. If we put item A here, we are expecting to see zero, right? But it says minus one. It says minus one means that this item doesn't exist inside of this list. This is kind of some tricky thing that Grasshopper does, which doesn't make much sense. The reason that they are saying that this item doesn't exist inside of this list is simply because we didn't retrieve this item specifically from this list first. We kind of add it on later. We put it on a separate panel and we put an A here. And if it doesn't find that this specific A from this specific list, it will say that it's not here. So how are we going to search it and how are we going to make it work? Well, we have to use like list items to find this A first. We retrieve it from this list and then we plug it back. They will find its index, which is zero. Well, again, you will be like, why we would ever need this? Again, it's very hard to tell you why without an example. So in the future, when we see this, we will show you. Another thing that is very similar to this component, but has a different way of operation is called member index. Okay, so let's see what does this do. So member index will basically fix this problems that we plug the set, we will search it from, and then we will pl plug the member that we want to find it. And then if we plug it here, it will tell you zero. So this member index, we'll find the specific items within this list, despite the origin of this data A. It doesn't care if you find this A from the data list that we are showing here, or you just simply type it in or bring it from other places, okay? So that's it. That's all I want you to know from item index and member index. The next thing is insert items straightforward, right? You have a list that you want to insert it to, and then you have the items that you want to put it on. And then you have the index you want to insert the item at. So for example, A, B, C, D, E is our original list. And if we want to insert this data, which is 2.687 to index two, right? Then we will get our new list, A, B, 2.687 and CDE. 
right? This is two is a index number you want it to be or index position you want to put this data in. So, and then again, this wrap thing will work if we put the index here as seven, which is all of the index range in our original list, right? We don't have index seven here. We only have index four. Uh, if we turn on the true, it will just wrap it up from the top and keep going and until they find the index seven. So that's insert items. And then what if you choose not to wrap the data? And then if this index is still out of range, it will just give you nulls in between. They will still keep this seven as our index for this list. Next thing I want to talk about is list length, which is super important and super straightforward. List length is just going to retrieve the length of this specific list, right? There are five items, uh, index zero to index four, and then it will give you a number five. And then for the specific example that we talked about earlier, that this nested list structure, each list has multiple items. What are you gonna do? If we're gonna put list length here, this is what we're gonna see. It will count the list length of each individual list inside of this list. So two, 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 two. So that is what list length does. The next thing I want to show you is partition list. Again, straightforward. Partition list into sublists. If we have a list to operational and then the size of partition, we have A, B, C, D, E, and we say two, three, right? It will separate the list into two lists. And first list has A, B, and second list has C, D, E, right? They will just cut it in between and separate them into two sublists because two plus three is five, which is exactly the list length of its original list. So they can elegantly separate it as A, B, and C, D, E. What if we just type in two? Well, they will just keep take two items out of this original list and make a new list. So A, B, and then C, D, and then whatever left will become the last list. So what if we do two, three, three, which is out of the range, right? We only have five items, but two, three, three, the sum of it is eight. Well, it will just give you this as an example. It will simply ignore the last number, which is three, because it's already out of index here. So it will just do A, B, and C, D, E. The next thing is replace items. Again, super straightforward. It will ask you to find the list that you are trying to modify. And then it will ask you to input the items to replace with. If no items is supplied, nodes will be inserted. And then the last thing is the replacements index for each item. Okay, super straightforward. If I choose a replacement index as two, and then this string GG will be placed on the index position, which shows that index number as two. So if we do three, four, so on and so forth, and then if we choose not to wrap it and out of the range, it will just shows an arrow. But if we wrap it by choosing the Boolean here, it will goes back to the wrapping manner that we have seen in this software. The next thing is reverse list, straightforward. You give it A, B, C, D, E, it will give you E, D, C, B, A. And again, you have a nested lists, which means that each list has multiple lists. They will just reverse all the individual lists inside of this list one by one. The next one is shift list. Well, the definition is offset all items in a list. If we have A, B, C, D, E, and you said shift input as three, it will just move the item in the original list, which has an index number three to the top. So instead of having A, B, C, D, E, it will become D, E, A, B, C. And if you choose false, it will just cut off the leftover. The next thing is called sort list. Well, this can only sort numbers. So it's not gonna work on strings. But if we put this list, which has a bunch of numbers, you will find the smallest number and put it all the way to the biggest. So it's very useful in a lot of time when we are processing different kinds of data. The next command is called split list. It says split a list into separate parts. If we do A, B, C, D, E, and we say index as two, you will just put A, B as one list and C, D as another. If we do three, it will just take the first three items into one list and whatever left into the second list. Okay, so very straightforward. Well, the next thing is called sublist. It says extract a subset from a list. Very straightforward. That means if you give it a 
domain, right? One, two, three. You just take the index one to index three. So BCD will be retrieved. Very straightforward. Again, the wrap will be applied here in the manner that we have seen before. The next thing I want to talk to you is called call index. It's just basically remove indexed items from a list. So we have A, B, C, D, E. And if we don't want the index position two, we will just remove it, remove the items on the index position two, and then it will become A, B, D, E. The C will be removed. And of course, if you set the Boolean as false, and then this index is out of range, it's not gonna do anything. If you say, I wanna remove index nine, well, we don't have index nine here. So the list stays the same. So let's go back to this set here. So we basically introduced most of the commonly used list operations today. And uh, again, there are other kind of things that we definitely will use quite often, which is kind of like repeat, right? Repeat the data several times. Series, we already talked about this for many times. Random, we will include this in our specific projects. And then those things like set differences and the set intersections, Again, we will not talk about it specifically because it's just some common sense. And then we will introduce them in our specific projects in the future. The next one are related to text. Again, very important things, but it's not worthy for us to have a specific lecture for it. The last one is a tree. Very, very important thing. We talked about the flattened tree today, and we also talked about the graft tree today. We might well have another course specifically introducing this tree in the future. And that's it. That's all we can talk about today, which is pretty much included all the list operations that we are going to use in our future projects. Again, this course is so important. Please take a very careful look. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.